Greetings everyone, welcome back to Life of Clay for another sculpting video. Kenji here, your sculptor. I will be sculpting a bizarre looking turtle called Matamata Mata Turtle, Kelus Fimbriata. And before we begin, please click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon right next to it, so you don't miss out any of my future videos. So let's bring the clay on guys and play hide and seek with the Matamata. Mata. And before we go to sculpting, I first draw a quick sketch of our Matamata Mata turtle. Next is building its armature using aluminum foil that I formed into flattened oblong shape. Then I poke one end of the foil all the way through and insert this 3mm aluminum wire. I apply epoxy on it to fix it in place. And I also inserted two pieces of stainless steel wire on both sides of the aluminum wire. And this will be the wire for the legs. And once the epoxy is cured, I bend the leg wires into their position. And I slightly curve the head wire to the right. I wrap cotton twine on the wires to create tooth on them so clay can cling during sculpting. And then I apply epoxy on the neck and head wire and then wrap it with foil to bulk it up. Next, I saturate twines with clear resin and then set it aside to cure. Now I pre-cover it with the Sculpey Original so I may have a good base and guide in sculpting its shell later. I add markings on top of it for those skewed location later on. And then cure it in the oven for a few minutes. We can now begin sculpting its carapace or its convex upper shell. I cut triangular pieces of clay out of this thick noodle of clay and adhered them on those square markings I have made earlier. Observing the sizes and patterns of those knobby kills called scutes. The turtle carapace is actually their broad and flattened ribs that have fused together, along with parts of the backbone. It is made out of bones where exterior is covered with keratin layer. And it is also covered with scutes, those knobby kill like thing including the vertebral scutes, those on the top center column, and coastal scutes situated on both sides. Pushing the surrounding surface of each scute to form ridges around them and make their bases blend and close the gaps between them. Matamata Mata turtle is a large freshwater and a sedentary turtle with a large triangular flattened head with many tubercles and flaps of skin that when triggered send signals to its brain and do a necessary reaction. It has also a very long neck where it extends to reach the surface of the water to breathe through its tubular snout act as a snorkel. They can be found throughout the Amazon in northern South America and in Orinoco basins. Fimbriata is one of the two extant species in the genus Kelus, and the other one being Kelus orinocensis. An adult Matamata -mata turtle's carapace can measure up to 37 inches and weight up to 21 kg. The appearance of this turtle's carapace resembles a piece of bark and its head resembles fallen leaves, indeed a good camouflage they possess. Unaware small fishes swim too close and they disappear instantly, sucked in by the Matamata's wide powerful vacuum mouth when they open their jaws. Their eyes reflect light similar to other nocturnal reptiles, so they predominantly feed at night and kept them smiling all day long. Actually, they are smiling. Look at that smile. Next is sculpting those marginal scutes. I attach a strip and a noodle of clay around the edge and blend it to the surrounding clay. I separate each plate by adding lines using an explorer tool and then texture their surface.
now I add those scaly horizontal layers or lines on the groove of each skew. Then I give a gentle brush of alcohol and bake it in the oven. Now let's proceed sculpting the plastron by laying a thin oval shaped sheet of clay on its belly. Then I create lines to separate each plastron's bones. Pushing the clay on its side to form the bridge. Bridge is the bony part that connects the plastron and the carapace. The plastron is the posterior part of the turtle shell. It's nearly flat but at some other species it can be little curved. And it is made out of 9 bones plus 2 epiplastra located on the anterior part. I added shallow lines texture on each plate and I detailed the plates of the bridge as well. Now I added steel and sculpting its anus. Then I start texturing the leathery skin of the tail and legs using various tools. I also decided to continue sculpting its femur to lessen the difficulty of sculpting the legs later and I added texture on them as well. And after that, bake it in the oven. Meanwhile, let's make the claws and snout. I roll out the small pieces of clay into thin roll and made their tip pointy. Curve their tip slightly to form the claw. And in forming the snout, I roll out a slightly thicker roll of clay and then I cut the tip flat and poke two holes for its nostril. Texture it and then bake them all together on a tile. Now let's resume sculpting the forelegs, covering the remaining exposed part of the wires and start shaping them based on the reference. holes on the anterior part of the foot and insert each claw, 4 for its hind legs and 5 for its front legs. Then lock them in place by pressing and blending the clay around them, adding groove in between each toes to create the web of its feet. Then I start texturing them and add those smaller scutes on the upper portion of its legs. And cure every finished pair of legs using heat gun. Now let's prepare the flops by laying a very small pieces of clay on a rough tile. Press them flat and make their edges jaggy using a small dotting tool. After that, place them in the oven to cure. Now sculpting its neck and head, the last stage of sculpting. Cover it with a thin sheet of clay and close the seam. Poke hole on the tip of the head and insert the snout, dipping its end in the paste of polymer clay, and then close the seam. Then I attach those triangular flops on the side of its head. Then I add extra mass on its lower throat. They may look like boobs, but they aren't. Turtles have no boobs. 
And now I'm texturing the neck and the head. Poking the area for the eyes and embed this tiny pre-baked polymer balls. I added more tiny bumps on its upper neck to give it more that rough look. I create a small incision on the tapered side of the neck and insert those flaps we made earlier. Adding also those tubercles and flops underside of its head. And after that, I bake it in the oven over my sand bedding. And now it's ready for painting. I first prime it with a mix of matte acrylic paint of titanium white, yellow ochre, and burnt amber. Then I mix together raw amber and burnt amber in painting the head and the legs. I added black to the remaining mix and dry brush the head and legs with it. Next is painting the carapace with a mixture of burnt sienna, burnt amber, and acrylic thinner. Dry brushing the plastron with burnt amber. Then I spray the underside of the head and legs with a thin coat of the same paint mix I used for the carapace. Painting those black patterns on the plastron, bridge, neck, top of its head, and on its carapace using burnt amber and black mix. Painting the mouth and nostrils with pinkish flesh-colored paint and the irises with pure black. Then I brush the scutes of its carapace with a wash of burnt sienna to increase saturation. I brush the underside of its head and neck with a mixture of burnt sienna and blood red. And lastly, sealing it with gloss water-based polyurethane varnish. And that's it, our Mata Mata Turtle is finally done. What can you say about it guys? Did you like the outcome? If so, then please leave this video a thumbs up or comment below it and I will be happy to reply to you. And I will greatly appreciate the share as well. For this may help our channel to grow and produce more videos in the future. Hope you enjoy the whole process and may you find my techniques useful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification bell icon below. So you will be updated for all the new video I will upload. Thank you very much for watching and may you have a wonderful day everyone. See ya!